some time with Nova and Seophonic, man. This was great podcast. Great, great time. You're my dude. I will be back, and we're going to chop it up, son. Get it all out here. They're going to know about everything about the Virginia Mac, and we're going to dig into their brain a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, let them pick the brain. <laughs> CFR Network, CFR News, Shalom, Balance, Paradise, Righteousness, all back in the lab, diligently working hard. As we can see, i got a pioneer, a legend in the lab with me, um, the one and only cool Kim, Ultra Mag, MCs, NY Oil, uh, you know, honors. That's what I want to say first. Honors, thank you for the experience. Thank you for the time. Thank you for being part of the soundtrack of my youth and my coming up as a little one into a um into a man. You know what I mean? So thank you for carving out some time and um, blessing the uh, the broadcast with some jewels, some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Right on, right on. Well, there will be thanks for happening once again. Uh, everybody listening, it's your friendly neighborhood fly guy, Cool Kim, a.k.a. M.Y. Ola Ideal, representing uh, UMCs, you know what I'm saying, uh, from Staten Island, New York, you know what I'm saying, first to do it out of there, and uh, just out here to represent for 50 years of hip-hop, really excited for the opportunity to kick it with you, brother, and just build, man, so let's build, man, let's talk about the things that's in our in our minds and hearts, guys. Defo Nets. Well, as we as we alluded to earlier, and let, let's actually stay on that. Um, the culture, as I was as I was um, building earlier, the, the the culture of this year we call hip hop, and you were alluding to um, your opinion of how you see the the, the culture. As many are like, mm, this. When I was coming up, we had a lot more sort of variety. Let, let, let me lay, lay a little bit of foundation because I can understand, understand, and understand exactly what where people are coming from. Because they're coming from a place of nostalgia. They're also coming from a place of this is where it is. this is this is me. This is how I came, and this is what I did. Da da da. I okay. So we had we had the the backpack rap. We had the hip hop. We had the, the rhyme skills, we had the West Coast stuff, we had the gangster, we had the, the Southern rap, we had all of these sub-genres of something we call hip-hop, which gave us, okay, I just want pure lyrics, maybe a little bit of a basic production style, but I just want to hear bars, I just want bars, we're going to come to the East Coast, we're going to go in to the tri-state and hear that there. Yeah you know, potentially, depending on your musical taste. Now in the landscape of, that we're in the Gregorian year of 2023, on a mainstream level, I don't see that variety of what we consider hip-hop. I'm just seeing one narrative being thrown down, not only us as adults, the babies, man. So that's my kind of, you know, that's what I see. And I, but again, I, I, I mean, I got good the... news for you. I got, mm -hmm. new, I got good news for you. Um, you're both right and wrong. What you're seeing is accurate, but it's also an illusion. The accuracy is that, yes, our music and our culture has been commodified by corporate interest. And so corporate interest has bastardized our music and our culture, the thing that we created uh, from a space of, deficit mm. and uh just turn it into a commodity and a product and products are sold however they can sell uh they market them as easy as they can be marketed what tends to work well in marketing as we find is sex things that make you angry uh hyper masculinity violence uh drug usage uh, you know certain things that seem the lowest chakras the lowest energies do the best in certain scenarios. So when we look at our culture and we see that it's been commodified by corporate interest, we have to one, own that truth. And it's not a truth that we have to own as a matter of us being like that, that we did so much wrong. Mm. It's to say, listen, if you, uh, uh, you know, you can't, you can't cure alcohol if you don't believe you're alcoholic. Yes. If you, die, if you misdiagnosing a problem, how are you gonna fix it? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the scenario and you're saying, yo, this cult, yo, this nine, nah, yo, this is only one style of music, where's the variation? All right, well, where's the var where, where did the var when did the vari the variety of music, when did it cease to exist? 
Did it cease to exist when these kids came through? No. I'm going to tell you when it ceased to exist. When the Source and the Vibe magazine started calling creative hip-hop, intellectual hip-hop, happy rap, and made it an insult to be creative or intellectual or abstract or artistic. Mm. And the Source did that. And they did that in 93. All right? 92, actually. You dig? So this this thing that us older heads, sometimes when we get to talking and we be waxing poetic about the old day and then we talk about these young people, let's make sure that we talk about the fact that it was us, meaning y'all, because it wasn't me, because I was one of those artists that y'all abandoned. You dig? Mm -hmm. And I'm keeping it like, I'm not angry. I'm just, I'm, because I'm not, yes. I don't, it's just academically, if you just look at it, yeah. I'm one of the groups that shall abandon because they told you, yo, it's time for the hardcore. You gotta yeah. be hardcore. And Cass, y'all didn't have a backbone to stand on y'all principle and be like, nah, I'm that's good for y'all. Y'all do you. This is my wave right here. And so UMCs and all these native quest, native tongue type artists, you know, the 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 rhyme stylers and the the, the divine styler rather and the the, the Lakim Shabazzes and, yeah. you know, the, the the KMDs and all of these different mm -hmm. amazing groups that were just giving you these various viewpoints it was outmoded. And then all you heard on the radio was gangster, you know, thuggery yes. and weed. You know what I'm saying? It was all about smoking weed and thuggery. I enjoy a good, you know, I enjoy a good stick of flour like the next person. Mm -hmm. But at the rate of consumption... Yes. That that music was being put out, right? It seemed nefarious. It didn't even make sense. And then all of a sudden, everybody smoked. You remember there was a point when, like, yo, at first, nobody like, just wanted out my mind to smoke, whatever, whatever. Then there became a point where it was like, everybody was smoking. Like, the cast that you was swore would never smoke was smoking. You understand? And, um, it that became was, almost like an accessory. Like if you listen to hip hop, oh, you don't smoke weeds. You don't smoke. It's like weird. Like yo, you don't smoke. You know what I'm saying? Huh? You don't drink. You know what I'm like you don't drink forty. Like mm. so, when they realize, that's like yo, we could get these people to do anything. Yeah. If we put it to this music, mm -hmm. we the could power get them, in the music. Let me, how, let me show you how powerful that is, bro. You ready for this one? Yo, back in the day. You know, we talk about crack, right? And it's like universally recognized as being bad. And hip-hop has always stood against it, right? Mm -hmm. It's not true. It's not true. Fact of the matter is, when crack first came out, there was a song, beam me, uh, beam me up, Scotty. Crack is the word. Crack, mm -hmm. crack, crack is the word. It was like, yo, crack's the word. Crack is the word. Like, that that, that, that means it's like, yo, the crack is was popping. Like, that's yeah. what's happening now. Slick. Give me a time. Give me a time frame on this sibling. What year did that come Talking out? About like, all right. Well, I, to give you a, I can't say the year specifically because it's yeah. been years, eighties. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mid oh, we're talking eight, mid eighties. Yes. So now, but well, watch what I'm saying. Right on the heels of that, right? This is the power of hip hop. Post corporate greed realizing the p power of this music right mm -hmm. so it's widely believed and understood that the crack epidemic was uh uh was was assisted by the cia oh yes you know that's doc well documented it's well, well documented. documented right it's been well documented how the cia and the fbi and cointel pro mm. um use sedition and a bunch of other stuff to break up the Black Panther Party once the Black Panther Party not walked into the Capitol with a, 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 um, AK-47s that time. Um, but when they started feeding the babies, when they did yeah. something progressively positive for the community, they became public enemy number one. Yes. I'm going to tell you when hip-hop became public enemy number one. When that song, Crack is the Word, came out, in response to that song, what was then, um, what was at the time called the um, Masters of Ceremony, all right, which was a group with uh, uh, um, a chanter named Don Barron, um, uh, another MC called Doctor Who, and one other that go by the name of Grand Poobah. 
Okay. You heard? And they had a group called Masters of Ceremony. And it was like, hey, yo, hey, yo, Prince, what up, bro? Did you hear what sis said? Yeah, crack is the word. I looked and shook my head and said, you mess with crack, it better be while I'm dead. Because if I ever catch you, I punch you in the head. All my friends to it. I told your friends the jokes. I tell them plain and simple. The smoking coke is no joke. This is what they were. That's this the song they came up yeah. with. Response to that. And to action. Say, mm. This is the power of this culture was writing itself. When it seemed wrong, it wrote it. It, it was writing itself. This is a culture, right? That you got most of these young men and women is growing up without fatherless homes. Yes. Writing rhymes to raise one another. If you think about your rhymes, you say, yo, when you say to me, yo, you know, I want to thank you for being a part of my musical, you know, soundtrack. That's meaning that I'm a part of your learning process about, about I'm a part of your yes. college. You yes. Know? You know what I'm saying? And, and if that's the case, it's like, yo, wow. Look at what we doing for one another. You know, so God willing, some of y'all heard me when I wrote songs like "One to Grow On," mm -hmm. and was like, "Grow on this to make your life seem great. Grow on this and take control of your fate. Grow on this until you finally understand. Grew and grew and now the boys are you, man. Don't sit beside the shoreline thinking about your woes. Read the rips and waves, identify your foes. Then realize in this instance of existence, there's great resistance to the minds that mix this." Yes, I've made things known, but then again, I'm on the down low. It's obvious because my methods show mm. that I rule on three planes of reality, universally, mystically, conceptually. Then in due time, you may find that I'm living in the world of my design and I gave you one to grow. And that's 19 years old. I'm telling cats, don't sit beside the shoreline thinking about your woes to read the rips in the waves and identify your foes. I'm talking... This is stuff that people are yeah. just now figuring out what I was saying to them. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yes. And this music is the music that became public enemy number one. It wasn't Ice T's um cop killer. Cop killer. It wasn't, no, no. It wasn't NWA's fuck the police. Mm -hmm. It wasn't any of these things that have been known with these brand controversies. The thing that made rap public enemy number one when it became that at that point was that they were aware that it had the possibility to uplift the community that it was born from. Yes. The upliftment. They saw the power. They saw, as you say, people with the responsibility, like, oh, you're making that wax? No. No, 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 no. Here's our counteraction to this. Right. Oh, okay. So we definitely see the power in this. If we can get into as many of these brothers and sisters here... And dangle, you know, and trinkets. It, yeah. And, it and, and, and <clears throat> misinform and put the wrong kind of... And here's the other ill thing about hip-hop. And these are things we got to check. You notice, like, all right, so my name is Kim Sharpton. Kim T. Sharpton. You know what I'm saying? I'm a husband mm -hmm. and a father. A grandfather, in fact. Give thanks. I'm a beautiful son. You understand what I'm saying? I'm a homeowner and a... You know what I'm saying? A business mm. owner. My name is Kim Sharpton. My performance name is Cool Kim, Cool and Me, The Coolness, NY Oil. These are my mm. performance names. Yes. However, when I do a record, for all intents and purposes, I never stop being Cool Kim. Mm. If you see me in my private time, you will call me Cool Kim. You understand? If you see me on stage, you call me Cool Kim. At an interview, you call me Cool Kim. I'm Cool Kim all the time. I never stop being him. I never stop being the person that you identify with the rhymes that I've written. Mm -hmm. How crazy is that? Because when Arnold Schwarzenegger does a movie, who we always reference <laughs> when we talk about the violence in hip hop, right? <laughs> when he does a movie, he has yeah. the privilege of sitting in what he got the press junket. And during those interviews, he's being interviewed as the brilliant. Arnold Schwarzenegger, yes, who just acted in this amazing role and took us in this amazing space. So he's basically not only having the opportunity to separate himself, indeed, from his character, right? Mm. But he also gets the intellectual currency of the brilliance that it required to morph himself into that character. That persona. But because the mm. hip hop artist ne is never allowed to break from the pattern, from the Thanks. from the character, mm -hmm. 
he's never afforded the genius of his ability to perform a window into the life of an entire subgenre of people. He's never given the intellectual currency that's due him for the genius level skill set. No word play skill set trumps rapping. Rapping yeah. is the ultimate uh, word art. Yes. Not poetry. Oh, love to props do the poetry to the sky. You know what I'm saying? Props through to all great poets who have taken words and formed them. And you know what I mm -hmm. mean? But it's something about being able to do all of what a poet can do, but then to divide, multiply, and subdivide yes. syllables within the, the 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 frame of four beats. One, two, three, four. It's all these different ways he's approaching one, two, three, four. Baby, baby, you thinking you crazy lady, you not. Busting at your snot box, rock not, sweet top not, stop sec, beats like chop shops, we hot for the top spot, break dance, pop lock. He giving you this whole, you know, love unselfishly, love courageous, love outrageous with a love for the ages. Never be afraid of your heart. Sometimes love hurts. But that's how we know love hurts. Love works. This is what I can do with rapping. Mm -hmm. This is what I can do. I can go from pure fuckery, to put it bluntly. It, this is it. Into the most depth, the deepest depth, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, of thought. And um, when you have that kind of skill set and you're not afforded the recognition that what you're doing is transcendent yes. of any other wordplay that's ever existed, Oh, you got a problem. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because now the whole economics is not afforded you. If our culture is not recognized, the culture that is responsible for a solid 70% I, come on. of audio and, and digital technological yes. advances. Come on. The whole entire uh, 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 DJ subgenre of music production is wholly and completely mm. due to hip hop. Of course. The sa samplers, yes. drum machines, mm. all that type of sampling and reproduction of all of that is thanks to hip hop. Cash like Jazzy Jeff and 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 Rock Raider raises rest his soul and 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 um uh DJ Johnny Juice, you know what I'm saying? And on and on and on. A cast that's Super official that have done amazing things to forward tech the the current technology exactly, but because More they always because they always rock radar or they always Jazzy Jeff or they always cool Kim or they always so and so and so and so and they never John yeah. Smith mm. right mm -hmm. for some reason there's this massive disconnect. Between cats getting the, the, the props due that they truly need, the real props. Yes. Not to pat on the back for a dope rhyme or mm -hmm. beat somebody's top five, mm. but to get the checks that are commensurate to the foundation the that y'all laid. Yes. No, no, yeah, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me ask you all a follow. Let me just, let me just, let me just add to that because it was more than the foundation because the, the foundation was laid. Yeah? Yes. The yes. first floor was laid. The yes. second floor was laid. With the, and it was look, look, furnished. King, King, the first floor, the second floor, look, a billion dollars <laughs> was invested. We mm. we raised a billion dollars to build that building. Mm. These mugs just came in and started off renting an office, and then all of a sudden just claimed they own the building. Yes, and Excellent we just was like with it, like oh yeah, I guess you guys do own the building. Like they don't got no deed, they don't got. But they like they went and got they went to everybody's office and every floor and G'd everybody up and signed had them sign away their rights to the yes. very building that they built. Yes, that Kim. But that, that coach has been doing that forever. Perfect analogy. Perfect analogy. <laughs> chain physical chains a gun, but the mental chains is still here, man. Always. That's the that's the nature of the colonialism. You understand? Oh, they keep you keep you razzled, dazzled, you upside down, you thinking you winning, but you losing. You think yeah. you done came up, but you done gave it all away. 
Mm. As you know, and then why you ready for here? Check this out. Now you're in the UK, yes? Yes. Okay, now check this out. And help me with this because now this is gonna be based on my limited perspective. I'm a frog in a well. Because oh, I'm, I'm I'm in America and I'm I'm from the mm. I'm here, but I I'm a frog in the well. I only see what's but I, hey, see, sibling, I sibling, see, right? Sibling, you're so, in the be- you're in the belly of the beast, and I'm in the brains of the beast. Yeah, you dig it. So, but so now I mean, so help me with this. Is tell me if I'm correct on this. If if you if you if you could relate to this, right? Because I I never said this to anybody um out of out of out of country. So I'm curious to see what your perspective is. So check this out. Hip hop, right, was created by young people in America. In the hoods, you know what I'm saying? The Bronx, New York, you know what I'm saying? Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Manhattan, Long Island, Mount Vernon, and on and on and on, right? Mm. Very young people making this music, right? Yes. Now check this out. The black man in America, if we believe that the black man in America was arrived to this country via the the transit uh the north the transatlantic slave trade mm-hmm. um if we believe if we accept that as truth right then the African American or the American African mm-hmm. is the youngest African of all Africans mm-hmm. and I say that to say that culturally and acknowledge yourself and coming into our own right yes we're still gaining that we're still Mm -hmm. seeking that we're Mm -hmm. still developing what it means to be an african who lives in america right the enslaved african of america right yes the most immature black in all of the diaspora right has got this music where they use words to Mm -hmm. articulate an idea yes and now they're speaking to the entire diaspora yes The most immature, culturally, black man is speaking to the entire world. Mm. Spreading. To the extent that now even Africans is calling each other nigga. Yeah. And that was in one of your rhymes? Yes. Yes, sir. (laughs) Now, watch this. Of this youthful group of people, the Mm African-American, the corporations only allow you to rhyme to about 23, 24 at the maximum. Yeah, That means you get the most immature Mm. of the most immature group talking to the entire world. Yeah. To rhythm. Now, in Islam, it teaches us that we should not have like piano and guitar like make music with mm-hmm. that with the harmony because it's intoxicating right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got one even iller for you 50 years of hip hop check me out in the bible right it said first there was the what the word and the word first, came with mm-hmm. there was the word the mm-hmm. word before anything existed the word exists Sound intentionalism, right? Mm -hmm. Second, in Islam, right? The Quran, the Prophet Muhammad, when he's given the Quran, the Injil say to him, Recite, (laughs) listen where I'm going, Paul. So, in the Bible, all right, in the Holy Torah, Mm -hmm. we're told that the first, it was in the beginning, it was the word. When the last book of re- is re- re- revealed to us, the Quran, right? The prophet of the Quran is told to recite. And when he recites, he doesn't just say, you know, God is merciful, God is great, thank you, God, for all that you've done in our lives, and we hope to attain higher. No, he says, he rhyming. Al Fatiha is a is, is the whole Quran is poetry. Mm. Now check this out. When you if I if I want to write down my name and I take a paper and I take this pen right and I start to write my name, what am I doing? Am I what am I doing with my 
I'm I'm what my name. I am spelling. I'm spell spell spelling. spelling. I'm spelling yeah. my name. Yeah, whenever you've not. heard it, whenever you've heard a spell, how the spell go? It, it's something like you know, uh, rubble bubble boil, uh, rubble double boiling bubble fire boiling trouble and all them things. Uh, all right, all right, don't they? Uh, yes, yes. You I know where you're going. I know where you're going, sibling. <laughs> so now here you got MCs mm -hmm. who speak words. We speak the word. Mm -hmm. You heard? We recite the we recite the word. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And these words are all spells. Yes, sibling. And then they repeat them over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yo, they turn us into a weapon against our own selves. Yeah, our own the power crazy. of the tongue, sibling. Music yes, with yes, a purpose. Yes, King. That's why. That's why. When you understand those things, and and you know, for the average listener, that might have been a lot. You know what I'm saying? It might have been like it might have sound like a lot of tin foil hat conversation. But the long and the short of it is that we know that there's words like El and Adonai and, you know, saying that yes. that that these are mystic words mm -hmm. and they have actual resonance and frequency. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you another ill example where genetic memory pop in. You know how mm. we talk about these young rappers that we can't stand their music, but their music is dope. But these cats mm. just don't refuse to listen to find out for themselves. Check mm -hmm. it out. These cats just say, yo, you hating their music. Oh, they mumble rap, mumble rap, mumble rap, mumble rap, mumble rap. How dare you? How dare you call that mumble rap? Are you not listening to the cadences? That's all African drums, them war drums. And then we wonder why the kids is resonating. But being directed where, this is what the issue is. This is what the issue is. How they got this, how they got us is, yeah, that's what the that that's what we can hear it as. They're sub subliminally or subconsciously, they're taking it in, but it's like, okay, we got this force and energy. Where where's this going? Where am I gonna put it to? So you're not really catching what's being played. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So what happens is now you're at the go go club. They got a thing now. I'm now go anybody listening to go go might get mad at me because I might say this wrong, but they got like the pocket, the rocket, and the socket. You heard? So, like, the pocket is boom, that's what everybody know. Go go music. That's the you, you hear that sound, you'll automatically always oh, go go music, right? But oh, then oh. there's a point when it crank up, when it cranks up, it's like it goes boom. And you're like, whoa! Every time that happens, there's a fight. Every time it happens, yo, it's always fighting the go go. It's always fighting the go go. Yo, when the pocket come, when the soccer come on, it's always fighting the go go. Why? Turns out that, 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 African war drums. Mm. They didn't even realize it. It took years before somebody was like, yo, that's this. But it slowed down. That's why y'all fighting the club every time. Y'all getting genetic memories, getting triggered to do a thing. Go, go, sibling. Where's that synonymous with what that, that's in, that, that comes? Is that Washington or something like that? Where is, where's go, go? Come DC, from? yeah, DC, Washington, DC. Mm. Go, go music. Washington, Washington. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. That's why you, I say all the blame in the Satanic regime because you don't know where and what is embedded in the things that you engage. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's why we say we put our trust in Allah because most of the time we have no idea from whence and what we, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like you have no idea. Yes. So you, here it is, you book into the go go, you're not realizing that, yo, you might not make it home, not because anybody mean you harm. Mm -hmm. It's because y'all are tapping into something that's triggering something in you that is so deep in you, you don't even you can't even associate it to yes. that thing. Yes. And to think that that's not happening in hip hop. And then and then at the risk of sounding bugged out, right? But I'll give it a shot because this is the type of conversation we have. Yeah, right? Let's get into it, man. Let's Check get it into it. Watch this. So, so, so hip hop, right? Performing arts. Yes. Arts in general 
are about as close as we're coming, right, to espers, psychokinetics, telekinetics, you know, uh, 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 mind control, uh, uh, ESP. Okay. You understand? Um, you're looking at mutants in action when you look at creative people. I'll show you an example of uh, mind control. Um, move as a team, never move alone. I say it again. <laughs> move as a team, never move alone. You know what comes after that? Huh? Mm -mm. You don't know what comes after that? No. But welcome to the Terror Dome. I'll give you another one. Two years ago, a friend of mine asked me to sing some MC rhymes. So I said this rhyme I'm about to say. <laughs> the rhyme was deaf. <laughs> okay. And then it went this way. Uh, hold on, you about to be in trouble because you not knowing no rhymes. But hold up, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think it's, it's it's me, man. I'm, I'm just coming over from a, a crazy chest infection. I'm well, medicated. Right, right, right. <laughs> but check it out. The whole point is, I know that people listening were like, as soon as they heard it, they knew yeah. what I was talking about, right? Yes, yes. My point is, have you ever had an argument with your girl and quoted a rhyme or quoted a song? Sibling, I go one further. I have conversations with not only my empress, but with friends only using rhymes. Only using rhymes. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what that what that MC did to you? He performed mind control. Yeah, man. Programmed. He, 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 he inserted a mm. thought and an idea in your mind that you yes. would later use. Mm. So that means that he insert that means that this is like on some level inception. Because he's inserting a concept into your mind before you even have the the the, the the experience. So that when you have the experience, you form the experience around the concept that they inserted in your mind, not the actual thing going on. This is how powerful La Costa is, this thing of ours. Mm. It's how powerful this thing of ours is, man. And our people really, like if Cash really understood how dangerously and amazingly powerful this music would be, man, and is. Um, I think a lot of people would be scared, man. People would be scared. You would understand why I became, like, you would understand why I was the UMCs the way we were and the kind of music we made and why we smiled in our pictures and we came off that way because yeah. we were trying to deliver a message yes. that if people identified the message, we could have been in danger. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, think about songs like Never Neverland, where there's a part of the song where the kids say, but we are the kids of Never Neverland. And I say true, but never say you couldn't when you should say you can. Because yeah. if I were to, when I did what you now see me do, I would have never welcomed you. This is a 19 year old kid talking to other young people. Listen to that guidance and leadership in the form of just rap. It's 1991, man. It's, this is the whole point, sibling. So, peeling back the layers, where were we getting this knowledge yourself from, and this inner standing, overstanding, and all the rest of that? There, how did we be? How were how were we able to form cool key and present that level of information? All y'all, what was going Wait. on? Well, you, you got to keep in mind, right? Uh, you're looking at a time that's right after the civil the, the parents are the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. You understand? The parents of these artists are, are the parents who experienced Martin Luther King and Malcolm mm -hmm. X. And all, you know what I mean? Um, the parents... You're talking about people that live in New York, right? Keep in mind, you know, I live in Augusta, Georgia now, all right? There's a world of difference between living in a rural space. Oh, of course. And living in a space where there's 9 million people. Mm. That any You can't get on the elevator alone because there will always be somebody yeah. 
in the same space that you are because there are that many people. Exactly. Where you hear the term elevator pitch, that's a New York situation. Fam, you got from the, cause that, or, or train pitch, I got the time between one stop to the next to sell you on an idea. That's why people from big cities talk fast. Oh, people yeah. think they talk fast because they try to get over on you. No, you talking fast and I ain't got much time. Time. Yes. Right? I'm t- come in. I'm talking fast. And because I'm I am being I am being uh 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 I am I am also being engaged on an entire scope of things that all right, give it a perfect. Like, you, 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 all right, so in America, democracy all other than that, right? So mm-hmm. when you talk about um when you talk the, about uh democracy, uh, aka and mob rule. Yeah, you know, not even mob rule, because it ain't even the mob that's ruling, you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> You know, corporate yeah. rule. Mm. You know, capitalist rules. It, mm. It's just, it, it's just, it's uh, just in anyway. Yeah. Um, what you'll find is, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought on that. But what I think I was trying to say is just basically that I don't remember what I was saying. I ain't referring. My son just came to me. <laughs> yeah. Distractions and shit. That was even shit out of me just now, y'all. <laughs> That's why I gotta lock my door when I come in. I gotta lock my door so that nobody. That's why I'm building the studio because yo, I, it's a funny thing, man. In this life, sidebar. In this life, and it's something that people gotta know, man. Unintentionally and sometimes intentionally, you know what I'm saying. Your family will be either the greatest help or the biggest obstacle. Endurance, yes, yes, yes. yes Anything yes. that you try to do. Mm-hmm. You understand? And mm-hmm. what it, it really boils down to is familiarity breeds contempt. You understand? And, you and know, also people... complacency. Say again. And also complacency. It, it builds. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You just be you because you feel like you're good. Mm. It's like you're never good. You're never good with another human being. Because everybody's constantly growing and changing. You think you're gonna be good with somebody who was good with yesterday because you, you're doing the same thing. They might have been tolerating what you did yesterday, hoping that tomorrow you would <laughs> tighten up. Yeah. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, so but what ends up happening is is that you'll find like as some African um quote I heard, it may not be a quote, I may not be real, but I just heard this quote and, I, and they said it was an African quote, so I liked it. Um it was saying something to the extent of if there's no enemy without in there's no enemy, no enemy without can harm you. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, um it's very important, man. Like, you know, brothers and sisters, man, just on the sidebar, I'm very blessed because, you know, um, the women folk in my family are extremely supportive and down for me. You see what I'm saying? And so um, where there might have been times in my life where things might have been hard for me to do, that mm. I was surrounded by this amazing pod in the form of my mother, my wife, and my daughter um, that, you know, really help facilitate what I do now. You know what I mean? Because of their belief in it. And also um, their willingness to... Uh, provide the emotional and mental support so, that yes. a person would have to and need in a cer- circumstance like that. It's you know balance. I mean? It's having that balance of that feminine energy, that that now, non-analytical brain, etc., to come in and yeah. But now the fellas, the boys, damn near useless. Damn near useless. Like it's like yo, like it's like you would you would not even believe they're my son. Like, you would be like, yes, your son. Like yeah, that's my son. Yeah, like what happened? Journeys, man. It's it's journeys. Yes, yes. And and as much as I want to judge it, I can't even judge it. But so much, it's just like yo, that's your thing, my man. Do you? Then I guess I don't know what to tell you. As 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 a father, as an uncle, as anybody who is who's trying to help to 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 create a solid foundation, all you can do is do that. There, once they get to a certain age, you know, most high willing, they're gonna. Step off that foundation and do the right thing, but sometimes you just thing. yeah. Or, or they gonna, or and then all you can do, and then there was a one point I was telling my old moms, I was like, "Yo, you know, when I make a move, I can hear your voice. I can hear the, the various things that you've said to me. I I find myself quoting these things in interviews. Mm. These things are embedded in me." You know what I mean? And they guide me and they narrate my moves and choices. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? My mother used to say stuff like, uh, we do things by priority. We do them properly and then we move on to the next. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, that's some, you know, that's over and over she would say that. And at first, I just, I get tired of hearing her saying it. Mm-hmm. Now, now I'm, 40, I'm 52 years old this year. 
that shit is a staple in my life. Yes. I do it party, I do it mm. properly, and I move mm. on to the next. You know, like those types of things. And um, you know, uh, I so I put my trust in the fact that yo, you know, even though I may not have always got it when she gave it, but it was in my brain and I accessed it when I needed it. Mm. You heard? Mm -hmm. So I pray that for our youth, not just my kids or your kids or anybody's kids specifically, but for all our youth, especially for our culture, that, you know, um, you know, we start finding a, a way of being more effective mm -hmm. uh, with that engagement and um, that it doesn't always devolve. Like, I feel like the position that a lot of us take um, is the position of someone that wants to respect that they haven't adequately earned. And um, not really taking ownership for the deficits yeah. uh, and um, the spaces and places where we left work to do that should have been done already. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and these kids are in a precarious position because there aren't a lot of institutions for them to be safe in. There's not a lot of black owned anything that can gatekeep and support and promote, yeah. and, you know, Nature. help and monetize. Yeah, man. And then without that, their allegiance is forced in the spaces and places where survival is possible. Survival of the fittest, rat race, S especially in these major cities, man, especially in these major cities where you, you, you know, look, look, look at how, you know from living and growing in in a major overpopulated city and then when you leave that place maybe going on vacation for the summer or whatever when you go to a place which is less populated as soon as you get there you you you, you just relax you're not bro, tense it's bro, a, just a used, different vibe bro when i used to come i so when i first left new york i moved to maryland for a few years, right? And when we would drive from Maryland to New York to visit or whatever, by the time I hit the Jer New Jersey Turnpike, Ooh. which was like the last New Jersey Turnpike is like you basically on- you Yes, know, you, I know it, I know it. Now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we're almost there now, another hour you there for real much. If you at the beginning of the Turnpike, you got an hour, you're gonna be in mm. New York, you know what I'm saying? And yo, by the time I hit exit, six seven i am visibly and verbally agitated you will hear like yo yo calm down so what's the matter with you why, why are you talking like that the, yeah. as i get closer to new york yo i i don't know what it is but i am so tense and then funny enough me and my man <laughs> this is a few years back so we was watching a video on youtube and and it was a, it was a staten a staten island cat i actually think i know the dude and he was at, I know the sandwich shop he was at, though. <laughs> sandwich shop. And he barking on this dude because the dude asked him to make him a sandwich because he was behind the sandwich thing. But he wasn't, he didn't work there. He just was some thug dude that had that kind of juice to go by there. <laughs> so, yo, the argument was so harsh. And my man, me and both of them, you know, both of them from New York, what we let out here, he was like, damn, brothers in New York is stressed out. Yes. And I was like, yeah, son. I said, yo, that's what this big city living is doing. It 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 is like it's beautiful because mm. that chemical reaction of all of those things in there yeah. from the food, from the dirt, from the yeah. financial capital, mm. coastal town, and the you know, all these things impact what kind of life you're gonna live because all these things speak to the narrative, you know, the 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 the, the um the climate that you live in, yes, right? Totally. Um and it's like, yo, you know. Yeah, like it, it, it's it, it, it's so much. It's like it's a lot to unpack with these. Yeah, things. but you, too, you, you know, you you remember the um the experiments that the 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 mouse experiment they did way what, back because the there's a couple of them that I'm hip to. Which one are you talking about? The one that the one where they were basically put them all in that 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 huge enclosure, um, and they're basically. What was it? It was like a, a, a how many levels did it have? It had X amount of levels, and basically it turned into the a, a, a shit show ultimately, where they they devolved the population to where the the females weren't producing uh, the the enough litter. They were basically grooming themselves and doing all kind of stuff. There were ones doing um, men that turned like 
like you know strange wow. should we say I'll, I'll i'll shoot you a link man it's hella yeah, interesting you but, gotta, but in essence it, it, it shows yes Go ahead. Well, it shows that once you pack people or animals mammals into a certain confined space your natural senses start to go your as a woman maternally you start to act very differently as a man you know, as the male, you start acting differently, and it, it it's a. You're living in a place where there's somebody literally living yes. above you. Someone might be living below you. Yes. Someone might be living to the left of you. Yes. Someone living to the right of you. Mm. Across the hallway, someone's in front. The only yeah. one, you only got the one side where your window and the terrace is mm. that there's nobody directly. Now mm. you come off your off the elevator to go to your floor. You smell. Yeah. The sense yeah, of every yeah. apartment as you walk by it. You can smell, you know what ethnicity mm. the people are. I can go to a random floor in a random building and I can tell you who live in there just by the smell. Of course. Of course. I could tell you, oh, that's somebody that's that's somebody that's a Mideast, that's Indian in Mid I could tell I smell a curry in the air. Now that's not Jamaican smell. That's that's mm. that's Mid Yes. Now I, I, I smell ah now that's Rody. That's mm. somebody from the Caribbean. Mm. Ah, oh wait a minute, I smell that smell. Oh, that's that's some that's my like ah oh, that motherfucker might be from Guyana because mm -hmm. I could smell that. That's that's what you know, you can you can smell this shit. Mm -hmm. You might not have never even tasted none of that food. But your nose, no, because it's is but that's how so now if you can smell everybody smells, how how much how much of their energy are you absorbing from one minute to the next? This is it. How, this how, is how much it. how much mm -hmm. how much and I mean let's let's get really ill. I ain't talking about it and in, in general, like, yo, they have negative. Yo, you're not just being exposed to your next door neighbors. Like, maybe you might catch an argument or the smell of their house or whether they got, you know, they leave a, leave a dirty house or the roaches is making their way over to your apartment. You also...